about two years ago, I spoke with the six shooter, Seth McCoy, here on the podcast. And you're going to hear from him again today. We're doing a follow-up interview because since that time, so many things have happened. Now, in the first interview we did, we chatted about his career, his high school career, uh, his prep school career, his college career, where he broke his school's three-point record, scored over a 1,000 points in college, and then what he was doing on the social media side of things now. Well, since then, like I said, so many things between playing professional basketball, attempting a world record for the most threes made in 24 hours, um, I mean, all these different life experiences that he's had. He moved to Georgia and is back. I mean, there's so many things that have happened in the last two years. And we're going to learn more about his story. If you want to be an elite level shooter in basketball, pay attention to this guy. If you want to shoot for your dreams and you want to utilize social media to be an influencer, listen to this guy. I mean, I'm telling you, you don't have to be... He's like the prime example of like, you don't have to be a punk to be in front of all these people on social media. Our guest, the six shooter, Seth McCoy, is the exact opposite of a punk. The guy is genuine. He has put the work in. He practices what he preaches. He's a normal dude who wants to help inspire others. So pay attention to this interview. Uh, you'll want to get to know him. And if you want to listen to the other episode, you can do so too. I'll put that link in the description. But I'm just so excited to do this follow-up inter interview with you guys and just let you hear what Seth McCoy has been up to since our first time chatting. This is the Game Time Guru. So what time is it? Game Time Guru! This is the Game Time Guru podcast where I interview sports figures from all over the world to help deliver a panoramic view on sports. So whether you're a former athlete, one of the crazies, or simply a casual sports fan, this is the perfect show for you as we peel back the curtains and learn from our guests every single week. I'm your host, Shane Larson, and I'm helping you see sports through a different lens. What's up, everybody? Welcome out to another episode of the Game Time Guru Podcast. Listen, this is a special episode for me. Almost two years ago, not quite, but just about two years ago, we had on the six shooter, Seth McCoy, on our show, talking to him about his his journey. Now, since that time, I mean, seriously, I came across his stuff on TikTok. And then since that time that we had him on the show, we were just talking before we started recording, how much has happened? Um, I mean, at the time, I believe he said that, what'd you say? He said it was, a, it was 14 times you had hit 100 threes in a row. Mm -hmm. um, and as of today, the recording today, you just hit, as of last night, the day that we're recording this, your 55th it's time insane. of hitting 100 threes in a row. Um, your record is now 193 threes in a row. At the time that we recorded the first time, I think it was 144. 144. 144. So, so much of that. And then that's just, that's just a couple different things. There's a, there's a lot that's happened that I've actually taken note of that I want to talk about. Um, and some things that you have learned along the way that uh, I think is going to be super important for these athletes that are going to be listening to this. Um, one of the things you always say on social media, you said it on my show as well, is that you're trying to inspire these athletes to love basketball the same way that you do, like love the game of basketball like you do. And that's why you do what you do. Um, and so I'm excited to have you back on the show and uh, chat with you a little bit. First and foremost, let's talk about this. Okay. Um, this is something I don't want to forget about. There was a three-point competition, and I haven't really heard you talk much about it on yeah. social media, but I don't know if you're allowed to or not, but it was a three-point competition. Well, for, there's two of them. First was a cash prize that I want to talk about. Whoa. There was this three-point competition a year or two ago yeah. like right, that was like a $100,000 cash prize or something to, to go in there. It's kind of a large buy-in, to my understanding, because I looked into it myself. And I want to talk to you about that experience, because I, I never really got to hear a full rundown of how that was, but I knew a couple of people like yourself mm -hmm. and then a couple others that actually took part in it. Uh, could we talk about that real quick and see like yeah. what that actually was like being in a competitive setting like that? And was so, it really worth the hype? It was, it was my first three point contest that I was ever in. Um, and it was one of those things where I waited until maybe four days before the actual event was to actually like officially say I was going to do it. Uh, Cause it was around um, July 4th. So it's like we had a lot of stuff going on um, and it was this it was it was called the three point open. It was the first year that it was ever a thing. Um, and I think I think it was around 300 people uh, entered. And. The cool thing about it was the first day was qualifying. So everybody got two rounds and then your two scores were added together. And then that's where you got seated in the next the next day and there and it was basically a march 
Madness style tournament, which I think for a three point contest is really, really, really cool. Like yeah. that's like in terms of a way to do a three point contest, like that's a pretty dope way to do it. And, um, and it's just funny because the first day I, I did my first round, I believe, I actually, I believe both rounds, I, I got 25. Um, and it was the first, it was the first thing I've ever done competitively for a three point contest. And just to clarify, shooting off of a rack is completely different than shooting off of a catch, shooting off of the machine, shooting off of anything. And with the time limits, it's different. Um, and it was my first thing. So it's like I was antsy because I've never been in a contest before. And there are people out there that solely practice for three-point contests. So their shot is like specifically engineered for three-point contests which is wild to see like so robotic and just really cool just to get in their minds and like kind of just see. And I've never been around so many like-minded people that just love shooting. So it's like, yeah. I, it was like a dope weekend because I found, I saw that I wasn't the only one who just loved shooting threes. Um, and, it, and it was just dope, but they, they add your scores. I placed sixth in qualifying. So I got, a, I got a two seed. And where my story gets sad, I was the biggest upset of the tournament. Oh, no. <laughs> the the person I went against was a 15 seed. And uh, so I was Duke, and they were uh, Lehigh in this scenario. And uh, so I had a 50 combined, right? And they, their two rounds was like a 9 and an 8. Both of them, like combined, like 18 or 16 or whatever. And I had my off round in my first. So I had like a, I had a 22, which is still not bad, but this dude came out and hit a, had 23 and beat me by one. And then the very next round he put up eight. So it's like, he got eliminated the next round. So he had eight, nine went against me, had 23. And then the very next round got eliminated with an eight. So it's like, it's it's that's why I think it's so cool because one the best shooter doesn't always win three point contests. Stephen Curry, this is going to sound like an excuse, but Stephen Curry has been in like nine three point contests. He's only won two, three technically now because he did the whole Sabrina Steph yeah. three point contest, which I think was the coolest thing that All Star Weekend's ever done. Um, but that's why I don't talk about that three point contest all that much because it was a dope experience. I wish I did better. I actually didn't shoot bad, but, uh, but that was like, that was about two years ago now, about a year and a half, two years ago. And, uh, if they do it again, I'm a hundred percent going to be one of the first people to sign up. Uh, it was, it was a dope experience. It was one of the coolest events I've ever been a part of, and it's only going to get bigger. It's such a cool idea. Um, Anthony Maricola ended up winning. He's, he's the, he's the guy who, uh, who, who did a shooting contest with Kenny Smith on uh, on TNT years back. And and he's one of those that his shot is, is engineered for three-point records, for three-point contests, for this dude. This dude put up like 29 and still had like four balls left and didn't even get off all the shots. Like that's, oh, wow. that's ridiculous. Like that's crazy. But it was – Great being around great people being, it was a great experience. And, uh, and, and I, and I like that it was my first time ever doing something like that. Cause it kind of gave me some experience to put under my belt. And I, yeah. cause I never, I've never been in a three point contest before. So it was dope. But then like, for me, the way I kind of view it with what I do on social media, with what I, with, with everything that I do, um, with the type of content that I make is any kind of three point contest that I go and do it, It's a lose, lose situation. Uh, for me, because it's like, if I lose, then it's like people would be like, oh, well, you're not as good as like, whatever, like, or even if I shoot well, win, but miss more than some people think I should, then it's like, oh, well, he's not as good as I put up 25. I posted my first round and with, and I thought it was really good. And like all the comments were like, you missed more on the first rack than I've ever seen. Like that's you, you shot whore. I'm like, oh, guys, yeah, come on. Like yeah, you set fun. the standard for yourself, though, man. You That's crazy. contests are different. Like even if you saw the video, I put, I did a I did a round of the the actual NBA three point contest, and I scored a thirty two, 
And it was like all the comments, you missed way more than guys. I scored a 32 out of 40. I'm not going to make all of them. Like, come on, running from rack to rack is different. The people have such crazy expectations, which I've found. And it's interesting, like watching your page, any kind of influencer, but specifically you, because I'm a basketball player myself. So I love just seeing your stuff. And it's like the lack of respect and understanding, the clear lack of understanding of how things work is just mind blowing. And they'll still, they'll talk about it. Like I'm like, you actually wrote that comment and didn't delete it. Like that's sad, (laughs) you know? So like, that's just how people are these days. Now, I was just wondering myself because I actually contemplated like buying into that tournament and flying out there to to try to check it out. But again, I didn't know anything about it. It was just cool to hear your experience and and see. That's uh, it just seems it like a cool worth. idea to me. A cash it prize is pretty big. That's that's one hundred percent recommend, dude. It'd be cool and just like to meet people too. You get like 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 you said, like minded individuals. But then Seth, like just recently, All Star Weekend. If anybody follows, okay, so I'm gonna remind people who might not have been here. Like I've got more followers now, like listeners to my podcast, I should say than I did back then. So if you guys haven't followed him, I'm going to put your, your link here. I found you through TikTok. You also have other social media profiles, but TikTok is kind of where you're really Mm -hmm. known. Um, so follow him, everybody follow (laughs) his his page. It's actually a blast to, to see what he's doing, but because of social media, I'm able to follow and you were in, um, what was it? Indy for, uh, Yeah, All Star Weekend, and then you posted that you got to do another three point competition and stuff. So talk to us about this one. Well, it was kind of it, it, again crazy. Uh, my whole my whole story with social media, everything has just been kind of like the craziest stuff just keeps popping up. And uh, and this one, I got an email Thursday morning that I got invited to uh, to just this random kickoff event and in All Star Weekend, and it was like a Planned Parenthood like sponsored event. And, um, I I don't think it had anything to do with basketball. It was just, it was just an event that Kenny Smith was speaking at the jet. And I was like, I was contemplating if I wanted to go, the invite didn't look real. So like, you know, with all the spam stuff, you don't know what's legit. You don't know what's anything. And I'm like, like, this is tomorrow. Like, I don't know. And I have social anxiety. So, so believe it. Like I love talking. I'm very good at talking in front of people, but when I'm in a when I'm in a place where I'm not comfortable, that's like out of who I am, um, I get really nervous and, and, and I don't, I don't know if I want to go. I, I'm very good at talking myself out of going to things. Um, so my wife's in Georgia, I call her. I'm like, Hey, my parents will split a flight. Your pl- your, your ticket. Like, will you, will you fly in, like take the red eye fly in so you can go with me? Cause there's nobody else that I want to go with. And my, so my wife flew in that night on Friday, we got up in the morning and drove to Indy and, uh, met Kenny Smith. And like, that was, that was the first, like, you know, when you see people just on TV, you don't think they're real. Right. And it was like, it was like, he was the first experience that I've ever had doing that. Like I shook, I, I, I like, what's up, Kenny? Like my hand was shaking, like word vomit. I got, I, I was trying to, figure out how to pitch myself and who I am, what I do. Um, and, and his son actually was the one when I, I I talked to him and I was like, Hey, uh, KJ Smith, shout out to KJ Smith. It's it's Kenny Smith's son. Um, I talked to him after the event and I was like, Hey, my name's Seth. I, I I'm the six shooter on social media. What's your, what do you have any advice for somebody that's trying to break through? And like, like that's on the verge that just, like I want to, I, I want the six shooter name to kind of be like lethal shooter. I want, I want to be more commonly known. And I think I'm right there. And he, and he's like, well, what's your, what's your following like? And I was like, well, I have 600,000 on social or on, on TikTok, And I have, I've, have, I was almost at 50 K. I was like, I'm at 50 K on Instagram. And he's like, well, you're already there. And I'm like, I think he saw my facial expression and he was like, oh, you mean like getting invited to all these events and getting invited to go do all of this stuff and getting like, and I'm like, yeah, like I have the following, I have the page. I I believe I'm doing something that nobody else in the world can do like talent wise uh, when it comes to shooting um, at least. And, uh, and he gave me this invite to this, this three on three event. I didn't even know there was going to be a three point contest, but they gave me the invite for that night. Me and my wife went, it was blizzarding in Indiana that weekend. So, so we were about 20 minutes away from the event, took us an hour to get there because of how bad the roads were. Wow. And so I walk in, he gets us in there and I bring a backpack. I bring my shoes 
and my wife was trying to talk me out of bringing my shoes because she's like, Seth, this event's been a thing for, this has been planned for so long. Like, like there's not going to be a spot for you to play. There's not like, and I'm like, you never know. Like you never know. Yeah. So I go in and, uh, and, and I saw somebody that I knew. Um, and, and, and I talked to him for a while. His name's Connor. And, uh, and, and I was like, dang, like, I wish I could play like this. This looks really cool. And he, he like pointed over to where the promoter was. And he's like, just go ask. So I'm like, all right, like, I'll just, <laughs> okay, I'll just go ask. And I asked him like, Hey, if you need anybody extra, like, like I'm here, like I'll play. And he literally is just like, yeah, go grab a Jersey. Like you're, you're good. I'm like, Oh, okay. Dope. <laughs> I guess I'll stretch. And then, uh, and then I got into the event and he asked me point. Like, I think, I think he didn't know who I was. And then, about 30 minutes later, I think word got around to like what I do, who I was. And, and he asked if I wanted to be in the three point contest. And I was like, yo, I mean, obvious. Yeah, sure. For sure. That's what I, that's what I do. And, uh, and it's just like, they're on, I, I, I won the three point. I didn't even know I was going to be in the event. And then I, and then I win the, the Red Bull run the rack three point contest. So it was the first three point contest I've ever won. Second one I've ever been in. So it was just, it was a dope experience. I met the I met the uh, the Nolan, the runner of um, the the Strictly B Ball page, who actually made a story. He, they were the first page to make a story about me. Um, it was really cool to meet them because I, I needed to make sure that they understood the positive impact that they've had on my on my life and the, the change that they've kind of changed my life in a sense. Um, yeah. Because that video is the most liked video on my page, um, and and I, I I believe in not putting up a front and not, not being a character because, because I, I can't be somebody I'm not. So I wanted to make sure they understood like how much they mean to me and how much they've actually had an impact in my career. And then probably the most validating, uh, probably the most validating thing of the event was meeting these people with big pages that knew who I was. Like, yeah. like I met cash nasty and it's like, I was like, dude, you're cash nasty. And he looked at me, he's like, you're the guy who shoots. I'm like, yeah, that's me. I'm like, that's awesome. Like, you know who I am. That's pretty crazy. Uh, and then like, I met Hezzy God, I guarded Hezzy God. He didn't make me fall. It was awesome. Um, and, and he knew who I was like, it was just, it's cool being in the, like, it was the best weekend I've ever had in my life. Like it was, it was one of the coolest things that I've ever gotten to do. And I got to experience it with my wife and I love it because because I think my wife is finally starting to see that it's turning from a, a side hustle to what we're going to do. Yeah. And that's for me. And, and I, I, I don't know if we hit on this two years ago when we talked, but it was like, I was still trying to figure out what I'm doing with social media back, back then. And it's like, I'm there. It's like, I'm almost there. Like I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm turning the corner and it's, it's such a, it's such a cool thing to see because all the work that I've put in to, to doing social media, just trying to be a positive influence for younger kids to, to have somebody to look up to. Um, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see, to see that it's kind of coming full circle now. Oh, heck yeah, dude. What an experience too, man. The whole entire experience of just getting there. One thing to take note, if anybody's listening to this at the moment, that's like wondering if they should ever take advantage of an opportunity. You, you, you just said, Seth, like, you know, you have social anxiety. Like there's, a lot of us have that even myself. Like I, I I'm pretty outgoing. I'm on yeah. the media a lot. So I, I, I coach basketball. A lot of people know who I am, but there's times where if I'm in a set, I'm very similar in the sense of like, if I'm in a setting that I don't really not familiar with, I'll just shut off. Like I'll yeah. be there, but sometimes I'm not going to go out of my way to go talk to people unless they come up, talk to me sometimes. And so like, I even experience it myself and people think that's crazy, but I'm like, nah, dude, like I, I enjoy chatting with people. I'll chat with anybody. But like, if I'm outside of my comfort zone, it's different. So one of the things is for people like us in those scenarios, and there's a lot of kids I'm sure that are listening to this. If you are scared to like, maybe put yourself out there. What I loved about your story is even at your age with the following that you have, you're still a little bit, you know, anxious and and doing those things, but you brought your shoes. You went to the thing, you you talked to the guys, like you met Kenny Smith, KJ, all like you were talking and you took advantage, you just put yourself out there. Like you said, "Hey, do you, I I'm here if you guys need someone to play." And not only did they say, "Yeah, you played." And then you got an opportunity to do the three-point competition. You took advantage of it like that's probably, you were probably still pretty nervous uh, with all that stuff. And so I just think that's a huge thing to share with people is that like, take advantage of the opportunities when they present them and don't be scared to put yourself out there. If you guys have been working towards something like Seth's been working towards some stuff the last couple of years, just building his following and, you know, still put yourself out there and do some yeah. things that are uncomfortable. You'd be amazed at what can happen now. Seth, really? you, talked about, you, you talked about like 
some of the stuff you've been putting together um, in the last couple of years since last time we chatted. One of those was a world record attempt for the most threes made in a 24-hour span of time. And you put that live on multiple platforms, uh, TikTok, YouTube, and and um, you were like all over the place, like just doing your, your thing. Um, for those who followed that, which I was, I was like, man, I actually had church in the morning on Sunday. So I'm at, I'm at my church service, literally like logging in and like checking to see where you were at and stuff. <laughs> because it was like, it started the night before going into Sunday morning and stuff. And I'm like, dude, this is wild. And uh, people were asking me like, who's this? I was like, I had this guy on my podcast. I've been following him. He's like attempting a world record. And, you know, I want to know what it was like being the guy who was doing that. Like, I'm sure there was maybe an adrenaline rush. There was some like nerve, but there was some excitement. And then there's the actual fatigue, both mentally and physically and the things that you had to go through. Can you walk us through what it was like to attempt the world record for most threes made in 24 hours? I want to start off by saying, uh, never take world records lightly. Um, they are world records for a reason. They, they, they were set for a reason. And, um, and you know, when I first started, when I met my business partner, one of the first things we talked about was, um, was that record. Um, we were, cause we thought like, like as one of those crazy unobtainable goals that you set, like, oh, we want to attempt this one day. Like that'd be, that'd be really cool. And, um, and that was, shoot, that was, that was three and a half years ago that, that I met my business partner. Um, and that's when we set that goal. So it's like, it got to the point where I, I, I just got done playing my, my professional, uh, my, my rookie season playing in the TBL. And I got home and I knew me and my wife were moving um, at the end of June. So like at the beginning of July. So I knew we were moving to Savannah and it started getting closer and closer to that time. And I was doing live streams every single night and I came home randomly one night and I, and I was like, I wanted to do something big because that purple gym has, was super good to me and yeah. it was a special place. And, and young Harris was a special place for me. And so like, like Jackie Jones was the owner of that purple gym. He doesn't understand the impact that he's had on my career because if he didn't let me shoot in there, like, I don't know where I'd be. And, um, and it's, it's, I, I called my business partner three weeks out from when I actually did the, did the attempt. And it was, I told him, I was like, I was like, dude, I'm shooting about 1500 to 1600 shots a night now. And I was like, I, and I, and I still feel like I could shoot more. I am, I'm ending my live streams more so because of how late it is based on and not how tired I am. So I was like, I think I'm, I think I'm ready to, to do, to, to, to attempt it. And, uh, we almost didn't do it because we didn't think three weeks was long enough to promote it. Um, Cause, cause in, in terms of social media, like that's like to get sponsors and to get, we didn't know how big it would, would be. We didn't know how many people would care. We didn't know, we didn't know how big of a success it would end up being. And, and I was kind of naive about it. Cause I was, I wasn't even nervous about the record. Like I wasn't like, Oh, 10,381. It was like, people would ask, how many do you think you're going to get? I was like, no, the question is how many, how much am I going to beat it by? Like, you know what I mean? And, uh, and so we did three weeks of promotion. And I actually, it's funny because I, I, I actually just went through um, all of the numbers not too long ago. And uh, I posted in a span of like 20 days. So maybe a little over 20 days. So a span of three weeks, I posted 30 videos promoting the, the, the world record stream. And um, in those 15 videos, I got over a million likes on just the videos. And then, uh, and then we got over 15 million uh, views. On, on just the promotion videos, um, which is crazy J over just, just me saying like, Hey, this is when I'm going to do it. Th this is, this is what I'm, I'm doing. This is why I'm doing, doing it. And, um, the live stream dude, like 40, 45.1 million likes on the live stream, 4.8 million views just from the live stream. Uh, I gained over 60,000 followers from it. Um, and I didn't even, uh, I didn't even finish. I only live streamed for 21 hours. My body gave out. Yeah. So, so it's like in terms of, and so I, I made 8,200, um, threes in 24 hours. 
I shot it at almost uh, almost 89% uh, during during the stream. And my biggest regret is is even though my hand gave out and I couldn't shoot anymore, I I, I wish I would have at least fought through and and, and finished the, the 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 stream. Like I wish I would have finished the 24 hour. But uh, but I am gonna say there's gonna be an attempt number two, 100. percent that, that there's no there's no doubt in my mind that there's gonna be an attempt number two. I don't know when yet. I'm hoping for mid midsummer. There's not gonna be a breaking announcement on on this podcast about what date because I have no idea. <laughs> But I'm hoping, I'm hoping midsummer. Um, it was the hardest thing that I've ever done in my entire life, and and I think it was, I think it's the, I think it's the thing I'm the most proud of that I've done on social media, because, dude, I cried during it. My body broke down, like, and I, it, it wasn't even like it was one of those uncontrollable. Don't know why I'm crying, crying. Yeah, like it was like. I remember I locked eyes with my wife at some point towards the, towards the like mid end, like where I was in it. And I looked at her, I was like, I don't know like why I'm like, why I'm crying. This is so hard. Like, I was like, this is so much harder than I thought it was going to be. And, um, and I think that's why a lot of people now, a lot of people don't even know me for the in a row stuff. They know me for the world record stream. So they care more for that. And, uh, and I think that was one of the main reasons why I, 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 kind of said full send I'm going to try to do it because I made the 193 in a row and it popped it popped like and and, and sports center picked it up and and nobody else did so right. it's like sports center was the biggest one like that's the that's the that's the you made it right so they picked it up first and I was like here we go like here here we go it's going to it's going to go everywhere then nobody else picked it up and I was like it's like, dang, am I like, I got to the point where I was like, do I have to hit 200 in a row in order to get any traction on social media? And that's what it felt like. So I started going into lives with a lot of pressure. Cause I'm like, I'm like, dude, that, that 193 took 13 minutes. Like that was a 13 minute long raw video of just me standing in one spot, hitting 193 threes in a row. That doesn't happen. Yeah. So it's like, I, I started putting a lot of pressure on myself thinking like, dang, like I have to get 200. Like it has to have, like I have to do it but I'm glad I did this world record thing. Cause, and now me and my business partner were like, you know, it's kind of a blessing in disguise that I didn't break it first try. Cause now it's like a redemption arc. Now it's like, now I get to train for it again. I know what to expect. Um, I'm going to try to make this one. Uh, I'm working at a school now. I'm going to try to make this one bigger um, than, than it was the first time. More people want to be involved. Uh, I think, I think there was a lot of skeptic kind of how I do it, how, how it would all kind of go. And uh, there's a lot of people that, that want to be involved in, in the next attempt. Like, I'm going to make sure I have a trainer on deck. I'm going to make sure I have all this stuff to make sure my body's right. Um, it was, I think it was the, I think the reason I liked it so much was, I think, I, I don't know, I'm speaking for the viewer, because um, I don't know, but I think it was kind of like a man against, like, challenge, like, it was like a challenge thing. Yeah. Like, put your body to the test type type thing. And I think that's why people liked watching it because it was kind of like this dude's still going like this dude. So it kind of, I'm a very determined individual. I don't like when people say I can't do something. That's my whole career is predicated on that. My playing career and, and now my social media career. Cause I'm always like, why, why can you tell me why, what I can't do? Like what, who, who are you? to tell me that if I'm not willing to put in a hundred percent of myself into something, why can't I, why can't I achieve what I want to achieve? And I think this was the ultimate test of it. Uh, and now, now look, my body gave up on me, but, but my mind will never, my mind will never, and my determinedness will never. And, and I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for, for part two. Heck yeah, dude. I'm, I'm excited, excited to see it, dude. I, I've been, you know, I just been watching and seeing like, you know, there's, I figured there were some things you had to do to like, get yourself mentally and physically ready for the next one and make sure it's a, you know, just a bigger thing for you. And, um, there was one thing that stood out to me. People often don't realize the taxing, uh, the physical toll, I should say that it yeah. takes on your body to, to shoot that many shots. So like, like I remember your calf was hurting a little bit, your, your wrist and your thumb were hurting a little bit. Um, even like rubbing on your arm and, yeah. And, uh, and whatnot, people don't realize like you do repetitive motions like that. Go, go shoot 500 shots on a, on a shooting machine, which 
uh, the average person isn't used to. I mean, yeah. the other night I went and I did 400 makes the other night with a shooting gun, which I don't shoot with a shooting gun very often, but there's a gym here now that has one. So um, I went and did 400 makes. It took me like 600. It was like 400 for 600 or something yeah. like that. I was shooting terribly. But <laughs> I just was like, man, like my feet hurt. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, the majority of people can't even like, their feet are like on fire because it's just, it's like flexing the whole yeah. time. You know? Oh, like, dude, seriously. Like for all the stuff that I prepared for, I don't, don't I think I, I went into it for sure uh, underestimating um, and, and I think kind of disrespecting the the world record. That's why I say, like, if I got anything out of it, I I, I respect it. I respect it now. I, I, I It's there. It's it's him. Like, that's that's the record. And I think I think it, that's why I like it so much, because it's the crazy. I think it's the craziest record. Um, I don't think many people are going to want to attempt that. Yeah. And uh, and and the main thing that I did wrong. And I kind of knew that I was going to do it wrong I because my, my idea was go shoot as many as I possibly could at the very beginning when I was fresh. Yeah. But my pacing was horribly wrong because because if you think about it, in order to make 12,000 shots in, in 24 hours, the math came down to like 500 makes per hour, which I think I could do um, for how long. I don't know, but I think I could keep that pace if I if I fully said, Hey, it's a marathon, not a sprint because I, with my, whatever, like my thinking was I shoot over a thousand shots in one sitting during a live stream. I believe that I can do that two or three times at some point during this world record stream. And so I came out and I made 1100 threes out of, I made, I was 1100 for 1200, like on the dot. Um, for my, uh, for the first hour and 10 minutes. And so I was like, and I sat down and I was like, okay, I feel good. Like, that's great. Like I feel good. Then it was like, after I rested for a little bit, then I made 800. Then I rested. Then I made 400. Then I rested. Then I was down to 200 before I started getting tired. And then I, then I stayed like 200 rest, 200 rest, 200 rest for like a while. And then, uh, around, around 5 AM. So I started at 8 PM and then around 5 30 AM, I pulled my calf. And I don't know why I didn't think about injury uh, during it. Cause like you said, repetitive, like it's something's going to happen from apparently, apparently jumping 9,000 times in a row is not good for your body, even though I don't jump that high, but just doing that basically 9,000 calf raises. Um, I pulled my calf and that, that took that from resting for that put me behind pace. Yeah. Um, and once you're kind of, once you're kind of fighting to get back, once you're, once you're that deep into the, the attempt, it's kind of hard to, to get back into, into like you're back on pace. Um, and then, and then if you could have gave me a million guesses to, to what, to what would, would in reality kind of end my attempt, my thumb wasn't what I would have guessed. Right. Yeah. So, so my calf, I, I ended up recovering from my calf. Um, and then with like four hours left, I was at, I think I was at a, either like late seven thousands, maybe 8,000 already. And my, my, my thumb got swollen. And if you know anything about shooting, if you can't flick your wrist, you can't get the ball there anymore. Um, so I physically couldn't shoot and it was pissing me off because it was my hand, my shooting hand. Like, I, like if it, and it was from out of all things, it was from me catching the ball yeah, over and over again from the gun. And that's not what, like, it wasn't even from me shooting. It was from me. Like I could have guessed my wrist maybe, but it was from me, the ball hitting my thumb over and over again. And it was one of those just, I hate, I hate hyping this thing up so much. And I felt like I let my, the people watching down because I wasn't able to finish. And, and that, that's what hurt me the most, um, from the, from the stream. That's, that's what I, that's what it didn't hurt me that I didn't break the record. Cause obviously it's a hard record to break. I felt like I had. 4 million people that was rooting for, for me to, 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 to see me break it. And I let those people down and I didn't like that. 
because I felt like I was the center, like this is going to, this is going to be a full of myself thing to say. I felt like I was the center of the universe for 24 hours. Yeah. Cause I felt like I was the biggest stream that was, I was the biggest thing that was going on on TikTok during that time. And, and to not be able to finish is what hurt me. Cause like that, I wanted to be able to, that's why I'm so eager to do another attempt because I'm going to guarantee that I'm going to finish break the record or not. I'm going to finish. You're going to finish the full 24. I'm going to finish. I, 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 even if I lay down and just let the the stream end, I'm going the whole 24 hours. <laughs> I, I don't doubt it, man. I think it's, it's good for the people who are listening to this to understand what you actually went through. I mean, we get a small snippet of it from social media, but it's good to hear like the actual physical and mental toll. Like, I think that's, that's huge. You know, Seth, I, I want to make sure that in this interview, I get this insight from you too, because, um, one of the things that the athletes that I coach and including myself, even, uh, we, those who like pride themselves in shooting the ball. Well, let's just say they're like you, they go and they get shots up. They might not be like, like you in regards to like how frequent you're doing it though, but they feel like they're confident shooters, but they can't translate it to a game setting. Mm -hmm. For some reason they'll go get up 500 shots, but then in the game, they're probably getting five to 10 shots maximum, depending on their role on their team. And they're shooting it at like a 30% range. Um, they're not really hitting efficient, efficient shots. Is there any advice you have? I wanted to ask you this, like to transfer what you're doing from your training into a game setting so that it's actually, a, it's actually transferring. It's not just all for nothing. The first thing is that I would tell anybody is not even about the game. It's, it's, it's more about how, how hard you're working in the 500 shots. So say you go and go and get 500 shots up. How hard are you working during those five? Are they good 500 reps? What shots are you working on? Are you working on shots that you'll never shoot in a game? Or are you working on shots that you that you get in the game? Um, that's your first step. Because if you're not shooting game speed, if you're going lackadaisical, just getting up reps, you're getting up wasted reps. Um, the way I used to break down my, like when I was in college, um, and I broke down my workouts, I wouldn't just do the gun. The gun is what I'm doing now. People, people bring up me shooting on the shooting machine. I'm shooting in one spot. That's not how you're supposed to train. That's just what I'm doing now because that's what my live streams are. Yeah. Um, I do other things, but that's just what people enjoy watching on my live streams. But I got a lot of trail threes, um, head fake step over shots in college and screens like fills drifts to the corner, all this different types of stuff. So I would section off my workouts and have those shots. What I would get majority of the time in games be the main focus of my, of my workouts. Obviously I'd work on other stuff that I'm not good at, but why would you, if you're in season, why would you work on shots that you're never going to see in a game? Why would you work on a, a four dribble combo into a, into a step back? If you're never going to shoot that shot in a game, you're cause like, there's no point if, if you're going to get maybe one of those shots every three games, but you're going to get six or seven trail threes, or at least looks at trail threes in a game, those are the shots you need to be working on, especially during season, because then you're going to be, you're going to be shooting the same shots in games. Um, and then the, once you, if you're doing that and you're still not seeing much of a, of a thing in games, like translating over, it's all mental. Um, so shooting, I, I, I truly believe shooting is like 25% skill and like 75% mentality and and just over like like overthinking is a big thing for a shooter especially if you're shooting all these shots and you're getting two or three shots a game because you're putting a lot of pressure on those two or three shots that you're getting but i always tell people confidence 100 percent confidence comes from the work that you've put in if you step on that court and you truly believe You've outworked every single person on that court. Nobody deserves that moment more than you. You need to step into every shot. Like this is my moment. This is what I've worked for. This is what everybody said that I would be good at this. And I told you, Hey, I'm good. I'm what, why, why, why can you tell me that, that I will never be good at this? If I've dedicated my life to this, if I've worked my life on this craft to prepare for this moment, I'm going to knock down this shot you miss you miss basketball is a game of of makes and misses you're gonna miss way more than you make i made a video the other day it's like it's crazy the golden percentage for a shooter in a game is 40 percent. think about that you can make four shots miss six 
you're considered an elite level shooter. True. That's a, that's absolutely ridiculous to think about. Like I, I shoot 90% on the shooting machine, 90 plus. I'm not going to shoot 90 plus percent in a game. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I shot, four, I shot 42, 41% for my career from three in college, broke my college's three point career make record. And I scored over a thousand points in college. Like, it all comes from just confidence from the work that you've put in. You should have more pressure on yourself in your drills than you do in games. Games is where you show people what you've worked on. You got to view it like it's like, hey, this is what I've been working on. This is what the lonely hours that I put in that you guys didn't, that's prepared me for this moment. I'm going to outshine you because I outworked you. You know what I mean? Totally, dude. I love that. I want everybody to take note of what Seth just said right there too. Rewind that if you have to. Take note of those three specific things um, and how you can apply that to your own games. You know, Seth, there's a question that I've, I've seen people come up with and um, just knowing the game of basketball and people like yourself, I, I've i been around it for the last little while doing this podcast for seven years. And it's like um, that we, we followed your post-collegiate experience. Um, we've talked about a little bit of that here. Obviously, social media, like as an influencer is one thing, but... You also played professionally for the TBL, but a lot of people also want to know, like, is there ever, or were there ever aspirations to maybe play overseas or anything of that nature for someone like yourself? Everyone's like, oh, a white boy shooter. Why isn't he overseas just making banks, sitting in the corner, shooting threes and stuff like that. So, I mean, obviously there's more that goes into that, but I'm just curious, like, what was your professional experience like with the TBL? And do you intend on doing any more professional stuff? Or are you going to try to solely focus on like your training and your, you know, your social media um, as, as an influencer, as a creator? So I, um, so I finished college, uh, I signed with an agent and agents are hit or miss. My, I loved my guy, my, my agent as, as a guy, I loved, I loved the opportunities that he, that he, that he got me, but the overseas offers that I had, cause I had a few countries where I could have went and played. I made more money in the TBL than I would have if I went and played overseas. And what a lot of people, especially for me, um, I'm married. I, I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to go to a different country by myself and not make enough money to support my, my family. Um, so, so for me going overseas was not an option for, for, for that year, for, for last year. Um, because the offers that I got w weren't, weren't worth going across the pond to, to, to leave my family and be able to do this. So so Owensboro is where I played Owensboro, Kentucky. Um, the Owensboro Thoroughbreds gave me an opportunity. Um, they they actually saw one of my lives, um, and and they they invited me to uh, to their training camp. I talked to their coach on the phone, uh, Coach Anderson. Great, great human being. I love love Coach Anderson. One of the best coaches I've ever played for. And um, and I uh, I went to the to, to the training camp, and all they all they saw of me was my live streams. And, and they didn't know I could move the way I could on, on a court. A lot of people, when they see my live streams, they don't think I can play. They think I just mastered the, the spot up, whatever, on the shooting machine. They don't think I can play, which is cool. I, I, don't, I don't really care. Um, I know what I'm about, per se. Um, yeah. so, so I went to, their, to, to a tryout, and uh, I don't think I missed it. I don't think I missed a shot. Like, I, I played like it was, it was like a kind of out-of-body kind of tryout experience for me. Um, and then they told me they wanted me to come to training camp. And, and again, I, I wear my emotions on my sleeve. So my goal, my whole career was to play professionally. And, and a lot of people just throughout my career, just why are you planning? To, why, why are you training to play in college? You'll never make it to college. Why are you training to play professionally? You'll never play professionally. And it's like, if you hear, why are you doing this? You'll never be good enough long enough. Um, you start to believe it a little bit. Uh, it never, it never knocked my work ethic. Um, and I just kind of kept going through cause I played a prep school at one of the top prep schools in the country. I played at a division two school on full scholarship. And then it kind of was my senior year ended. And I was just kind of like, well, I'm not done playing. Like, I, I don't, like, I think I still got some bullets left in the chamber. Like, so, so why, why end it here? And, and, and I got, my coach told me, he was like, Hey, we want you to come. You made the training camp roster. And again, cried. I don't know why. Like it was just one of those that it was like, it was the first person that said like, you're good enough to play yeah. professionally. And, and it hit me a lot harder than I thought it would. Um, 
And so I went, went to training camp, played really well and made the roster. Um, the TBL, a lot of people don't really know what it is. Um, I think it's kind of a step below the G league, um, in terms of basketball in the States, um, on my team, I was the only, it was, I think it was me and one other guy that was a division two guy. Everybody else played division one. Our center played for Auburn at one point. Um, Loyola, Chicago, uh, Murray state, like, like dudes, like there's dudes in this league. Um, guys that have, that have played in the G league played on 10 day contracts in the NBA. It's a, it's a league. Like it's, it's legit. Um, I played, played the season out. Um, and, uh, and I, I averaged maybe eight points a game for my rookie year and shot over 40% from three. They use the NBA three point line. So for all those people who say I can't shoot NBA threes, I shot 41% from three during a professional basketball season, uh, from, from NBA range. And, uh, it was just, it was a cool experience for me because, because it like, I got to sit back at the end of the season and be like, I did it. Like, yeah, like I played professionally, I got paid to play basketball. And, uh, and that was, that was like, just in terms of my playing career, that was, that was something that, that, that nobody will ever be able to take away from me. I, I was able to play professionally. I played, I played professionally. Um, but to answer your last question, my wife is in grad school for school psychology. So she's going to end up being in a school system. I love my wife more than anything in the entire world. And I never thought that I'd love somebody more than I loved basketball. And I never thought I'd be done playing. I thought I'd play until the wheels fall off. Um, but I look at her and I'm, uh, I'm playing, planning out my, the rest of my career. And now I'm work. I, I made sure I'm working in a school. Um, I want to be in a school system with her. I want to spend the rest of my life with her and I want my life to be her. And, uh, if I can do social media on the, on the side of that and, and make sure that that's the way that I provide for my family, then that's what I'm going to do. If an opportunity knocks and it's something that can benefit me and my wife and benefit us in a positive way, I'll take it seriously. But I want that to be my life now. Um, I want my life to be where I can inspire kids to love basketball as much as I do. I want to be the guy that if somebody thinks that they don't uh, have somebody that believes in them, I can be that guy in their corner um, because I know what it feels like to feel like you don't have anybody on your side uh, when it, in terms of basketball. Basketball is a dog eat dog world. There's not many people that have your full interests out out for you. I want to be that guy that's in in, in your corner. I, I, if, if you don't believe you have somebody that believes in you, come, come find the six shooter. Cause I believe in you. if you're willing to put everything that you have into this game, like if you have a dream, like protect it, like don't, don't let anybody tell you that you can or can't do something. If you're willing to, to sacrifice yourself for it. Um, and, and it's just, again, if I have an opportunity to do something, uh, I will, but I, I love, what I'm doing. Yeah. I love what I'm doing. Um, and I, now I'm in a school and I get to inspire kids in a different way. And it's like, now I can, can inspire kids with a basketball or without a basketball. And I know what my purpose is in this world. I, I, I want to be a positive influence for kids. I want to, I want to be a positive influence for people. I want to be a good role model that somebody can look up to and be like, Hey, he did all right. Like, like I want to do what he, what he did. And, uh, and you know, if I get to do that with my wife, like by my side for the rest of my life, I'll take that. Heck yeah, man. You know, as we all get older, priorities shift a little bit, right? You know, like it's interesting. You mentioned all that. I can relate to, to a lot of that. I mean, my initial dream when I was younger, I'm 35 now, but my initial dream was to work for ESPN and be this broadcaster and this and that. And, you know, it wasn't until I was 28 and my wife and I got married and I was like, you know what? I'm going to start something on my, on my own and I'm going to support my family in a different way. And I, you know, I, I have a good living. I work a corporate job that I enjoy at this time. And, uh, I also am able to, it, it allows me to do things like this where I'm, I've worked, I built a media business on the side that is awesome. And, and sometimes the priorities shift while the mission sort of still stays the same, but you have to align with the people that are around you. And so I, when you're talking like that, I totally get it. So I think that's super dope. You've got to do a lot of things that most people will never do, things that you were told that you probably would never do, and you have accomplished that. 
I think this is an inspiring story for so many kids. That's why I'm like, dude, if you are not following the six shooter, follow the dude. I'm telling you guys, follow Seth. Your story should show all of these young men and young women that like, if they have a dream, like you said, protect that and go and do the thing. Um, you just got you got to be willing to put yourself out there. Sometimes you got to take advantage of some opportunities. But man, uh, you're doing the thing, and you have a skill set and something to, to to show the world, and people can benefit from it. And I think it's amazing. As we wrap up the interview, Seth, if I could just ask you, like, is there the last two years? Is there anything that you've learned, like like the biggest piece of advice that you would take from either the sport of basketball or social media uh, that you could provide to the youth out there today? Don't don't underestimate yourself. Every, everybody has something they can contribute to the world that's special and uniquely them. Um, for, for me, it was, it was shooting. I, I, I was, I was lucky enough that, that I found my live streams and I found that people liked watching me shoot, but everybody has something positive that they can contribute to the world. And it's like it's coming from a guy with social anxiety that, that doesn't like putting myself out there too much. Um, share share that with the world if you can take anything from me share your gift with the world because you could like you could seriously change the world for a better and it could be you like it could be you i never thought that it could be me until until i i decided to put myself out there and now i'm here and it's like all i do is shoot in front of a camera but i have a reach that i can reach over a million people and and and, and kids are inspiring me like i inspire them and it's like kids DM me all the time saying that, hey, you're the reason I tried out for this team and I made it. You're the reason I, I entered this contest and I did it. And, it. and and take it a step further than basketball. It's like even in school, even in college, even if you have a dream like like and, and you're scared to go try it, the, the worst that can happen is is you get knocked down. But the fun part is you get you get to get back up and go try again. Like. Like if you, if you love to do something, if you have something that you're passionate about, like, don't, don't hide it. Don't hide it from the world. Like there's, there's people, there, there's a unique group of people out there that might be waiting for you and you might be the person that they, that they need. So share that gift with the world. Ooh, beautiful, man. That's what we will end on. I appreciate your time, Seth. And, uh, I'll be following you as I've always been doing since I met you and, um, social media is a weird thing, man. People always hate on it. And I'm telling you, no, dude, I've, I've, I've met some great people like yourself through social media. I've, I found you through a TikTok feed two years ago. And here I am chatting with you for the second time on my show. Social media has this unique way of, uh, benefiting people if you use it the right way. So if yeah. there's anything that people can see here too, like, yeah, if you use it the right way, share your gifts, you might be like Seth right here and, uh, be able to inspire millions of people. So, that being said, I just want to say thanks one more time, brother, for sharing your story. And uh, for those who are listening, if this is your first time joining the show, you know, like all I'll say is this, hit the subscribe button, follow me on all of my platforms, and uh, we'll be coming to you next week with another interview. Guys, thanks so much for listening to another episode of my show. Now, if you could go and do me a favor, head over to iTunes, give me five stars and leave me a review. It would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your support.